Prior to 2007, smartphones meant BlackBerry, Windows Mobile, and Symbian. They were big, they were clunky, and they were not full-featured. But all that changed on January 9, 2007, when Steve Jobs walked into the Macworld stage to announce three new products. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet device. By this point, you should know he was talking about just one phone, the original iPhone. And as the iPhone 7 is upon us, I thought it was a good time to look back at the original iPhone. How that changed the mobile landscape, what that meant for Android, and what that meant for how our lives are going to change. The iPhone's never been about specs, and that was definitely true back in 2007. Nothing here is going to blow you away then or now. 3.5 inch LCD screen with a resolution of 320 by 480 with 163 PPI. It was quad band 2G edge only. It had 802.11 only B and G and a 2 megapixel camera. And perhaps the most important feature of the iPhone was that it could be charged and synced to your computer with iTunes using the same 30 pin connector found in iPods. The original iPhone was a lot of things. One thing it wasn't though was CDMA, which meant no Verizon, Sprint, and it was locked. Not even T-Mobile, which used the same GSM technology, could use it. The OG iPhone was singular or bust. So despite being announced in January, the phone wasn't shipped until June 28th, 2007, initially priced at $499 and $599 for a 4 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte models respectively. And those prices, while they might seem reasonable now, were unheard of at the time. Time. Spending 600 bucks for a phone seemed out of this world for a lot of consumers. So despite the marketing hype and the reality distortion field around the phone, the price kept the phone from getting to a lot of consumers' hands. So in September 5th, 2007, at the Beat Goes On music event, Steve Jobs not only introduced the first iPod Touch, he announced they were dropping the 4-gig phone completely, and they were going to drop the price of the 8-gig model to $399. Those who had purchased the iPhone in the 14-day period before that event were eligible for a $200 price protection rebate from Apple or AT&T. So yeah, people were pissed. A few months after the announcement, Apple goes and drops the model and cuts the price. In response to customer complaints, a day after the Beat Goes On event, so September 6th, Steve Jobs an open letter to iPhone customers that everyone who purchased an iPhone at the higher price is not receiving a rebate or other consideration would get a $100 credit to redeemed in stores or online. History has been really kind to the iPhone, and I think it should be. But at the time of its announcement, the phone was equally known for what it lacked as for what it revolutionized. There was no hardware keyboard here, no stylus. The iPhone wasn't rocking a pretty common removable user replaceable battery or even some sort of expandable storage support. None of that made the power users happy. Nor the absence of any sort of file system, cut, copy, and paste, video recording, not to mention that insane recessed headphone jack that made plugging in most non-Apple headphones next to impossible. It seems like Apple's had a vendetta against the headphone jack since the first day. It's hard to think of the iPhone now without the App Store, but that was not part of the original iPhone's plans. In fact, Steve Jobs touted web apps as the future. The original software in the iPhone, dubbed iPhone OS 1, set the stage for what current iOS 10 looks like. And if you look back what that original OS looked like versus now, save for being able to change the background and some icons being modified, things still look very familiar. The design of the iPhone I think has held up pretty well. It doesn't look as modern as it once did. I'm still not the biggest fan of the black plastic bit at the bottom to let the RF through. The aluminum still feels nice in the hand, and the phone is oddly still zippy. Despite all the drama with the iPhone, there's no doubt it changed who we are and how we use electronics, how we perceive electronics. Not to mention completely shook up how phones were bought and took power away from the carriers and put them over to the manufacturers. Now my allegiances may have changed and swayed over the years, but I'll always remember what the iPhone meant to me and how it changed my life and my career.